I woke up this morning and um, had had a verse on my heart and mind that uh, that was just placed there, I think, by by the Spirit of God, and and I can't remember the chapter and verse. Some of you may be able to put that in there, but just remember the verses. Um, though the heavens pass away, though the mountains be removed, I'll not be shaken, uh, for I believe in you. And uh, we cannot be moved or shaken. God is an absolutely sovereign God. I had some wise counsel one time. I think I mentioned Bruce Wilkinson a couple of days ago, and Janet uh, and Kevin Baker had known him in a church as well. He was a member at Glenwood Hills Baptist Church, who we were members years ago. And I had the idea that I had uh, really missed God and his plan, and things were not working out. Things had happened, and I just really was uh, just in a state because... I kind of felt like God had not answered the prayers I had prayed, uh, that it wasn't turning out the way that I had anticipated. And Bruce counseled with me after the service that day, and he asked me one question. He said, do you believe God is sovereign? And of course, I, I rhetorically just answered, yes, absolutely, I believe God is sovereign. And he looked me in the eye and said, no, you don't. He said, you need to get on your face and repent today. Um, and what he was telling me in that is that regardless of what takes place, regardless of whether my desires or my prayers weren't answered in the way that I thought they should be answered, I, I was sure I was on God's side in my prayer. Um, he reminded me that God is a sovereign God. And so I want to remind all of us this morning that God is sovereign, regardless of what uh, situation there may be in your life, regardless of what you've prayed earnestly for, and maybe it didn't come to pass the way that you thought it should have. God is sovereign. If we believe that, then we will accept those things that are different than what we prayed, are different than what we desired, and seem to be confusing. God is absolutely sovereign. And so let's be reminded of that. Uh, this morning, I, I want to lead in a song that um, when I was talking with uh, Pastor Zach yesterday, uh, we were talking about, thank you, Sandy put up Isaiah 5410. That's the verse reference. Um, we, were, we were talking about the line in a song and uh, basically, we were talking about how wretched and rotten we really are at the core, and edifying conversation. But it it led to this song, uh, the line in this song, prone to wander, wander, wander away, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. And we were reminded that, man, we all are sheep and are subject to going astray. And so we are prone to wander. And it relates to what we're going to look at in Psalm, uh, in Proverbs chapter 1 today, in that uh, it's by the Spirit and the Word of God that we have to stay so close to, uh, lest we wander. And so here's the old hymn uh, with a little added new twist to it, uh, Come Thy Fountain. Come Thy Fountain. Of every bless to my heart to sing thy grace, streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Now your grace is 
always with me and I'll never be alone Come thy fount Come thou king Come thou precious prince of peace Hear your bride to you be seen Come thy fount Thy goodness, like the fetter, on my wandering heart to be prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for Thy courts above. Come, Thy Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. The writer of Proverbs, Solomon, as we've stated, he's he's a, he's addressing wisdom, and here, picking up in the nineteenth, the twentieth verse in Proverbs chapter one, he he kind of personifies wisdom. In the Hebrew, it's in the it's in the fem, feminine term here, wisdom. And wisdom, uh, the idea of wisdom kind of takes on a personification of person in, in the Hebrew language. And so he begins by saying that wisdom cries out aloud in the streets. It, 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 in the market, she raises her voice. At the head of a noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, she says, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? And so here he gives the picture that, that wisdom, she's crying out uh, all in the streets above all of the calamity that's, that's happening, all the un, unwise things that are taking place. Uh, where there's a lack of wisdom, there's there's calamity, there's all manner of disorder. And she's crying out in the streets, and she's asking the question, how long will you be simple? In other words, how long will you not apply wisdom, the knowledge of the Word of God, in application in life? God's law not only being known, but but God's law and His precepts being applied in life. And so that she's crying out, how long? How long are you going to be a fool and how long are you going to hate knowledge? Then uh, she says, if you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. And so here it, it's very reminiscent to, to what Jesus had said in John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39 that he's going to depart and he will send the comforter, the Spirit of God. Let me read that reference to you. John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39. If I can get there. Uh, 38, Jesus says, Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And so here the, psalm, the, the, the writer in Proverbs is referring to wisdom will pour out her Spirit on you and you'll have understanding of the Word of God. And we've been reminded so many times that, that the Spirit of God and the Word of God were corporately, if you will, together 
in our hearts to lead us to righteousness, to lead us to right living, to lead us to wisdom. Um, sometimes we, <laughs> this will sound crazy, but sometimes we can have too much word and sometimes we can have too much spirit, meaning that apart from the word of God, the spirit of God can be misunderstood or misheard. Sometimes we think we're hearing the spirit of God when really we're only hearing our own thoughts, our own emotions. But it takes the word of God along with the spirit of God and the two cooperate together to work. If, if all I am is a, a word... Um, I, I hate to use the term, but I can't think of any other term. If all I am is a word Nazi, apart from the Spirit of God, um, it, it can be very damaging and very dangerous. And if all I am is a person that thinks that all I hear is the Spirit of God, I can be easily deceived by my own voice and I can be deceived by other voices. It's the two balanced together, the Word of God, and the Spirit of God that brings the application and the knowledge and the living out of the Word of God in wisdom in life. I'm not sure if all that makes sense, but we can't get too far away from the Word of God, nor can we uh, ignore the Spirit of God, because it's the Spirit of God that gives us understanding in the Word of God. And so we need both working together. Paul, when he was writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, he says this, um, that the Word of God is useful. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. But in the verse preceding that, verse 15, he reminds Timothy to remember the Scriptures that he had been taught from childhood, which are able to make you wise for salvation through Jesus Christ. And so um, we see here that wisdom cries out, if you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit. Now here, the, the, the encouragement is from wisdom is that, that we need to turn. If you turn at my reproof, and so it's the word of God that's useful for correcting, for reproof, for, for rebuking us to turn us towards the wisdom uh, that's found in the this, in this Word of God. Because I have called and you refuse to listen. So here wisdom says, listen, I cried out to you to turn. But because you refuse to listen, uh, I've stretched out my hand and no one has heeded. Because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you, when terror strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and have their fill of their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away. And the complaints, complacencies are fools destroyed, uh, they're destroyed by them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster." So here wisdom is saying, listen, I've cried out so many times. The application for us is, is that, is that there, if there's an area in our life, is there, if there's something that we continue to ignore the wisdom that's poured out in our hearts and in our lives by the Spirit of God and the precepts in the Word of God, if we continue to ignore that, then all calamity is going to come. It's going to come as a, as a, as a, uh, as a consequence of ignoring the wisdom of the Word of God applied in our lives. And then wisdom says, at that time, there'll be all calamity, and you'll cry out to me. But hey, it's kind of like wisdom says, you've made your bed, you're going to have to sleep in it. These are the consequences that naturally follow. And so we're encouraged by this, we're exhorted by this, that we're to heed the Word of God, 
not only be a hearer, but a doer of the word of God would be another way that James put it. And so this morning, today, whatever it is that that maybe the Lord's been prodding you in, if there's a precept that that you're not following, if, there, if, there's, if there's a word of wisdom from his word that, that you're ignoring, turn and apply that wisdom in your life from the word of God. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. Uh, please continue to remember to pray uh, for the Petresca family, um, for Constantine and Leah and the kids. At, we're praying and asking God for healing for them. I pray that uh, today that God will give you and me an opportunity uh, to plant a seed in somebody's heart of the Word of God. God, give us chance. Give us opportunity in everywhere that we are today. God, make us attune uh, to, to your work in other people's lives so that we might be able to plant a seed in the heart of someone today. Uh, that God would depend on your Holy Spirit to cultivate that seed. And God, if there's one that we come across today that, or the seed's already been planted in their heart or multiple seeds, God, that we'd be able to continue to foster that, Lord. Uh, and God, if you would, by your grace, allow us to be participants in seeing that seed come to fruition and being a part of the harvest of someone coming to know Christ. God, we pray you'd use us in that way today. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you, that he keep you. Have a great day.